And welcome, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, to the Valley of the Judged. It is once that t it is once again that time as as we do ev as we do every Friday in this series, where my where myself and my good brothers vent venture into the weird, the wild, and wonderful of the Level Up Advanced Fifth Edition playtests working title. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, of course, I have my I have my two brothers in arms. We have the we have the man of a thousand mechs, good brother Ash, who, pro uh, who probably is who probably really who'd probably really want to really want a hold of a a a, a Marauder lance. Either mm. either that or, either that or is probably argue probably arguing the virtues of of um. Of fielding an entire lance of north of North Star Titans, exactly. Plasma <laughs> railguns, please, please. Mm -hmm. eh. And we have the man of a thousand runes and the bane of my exist, the bane of my fucking existence. Good, br good brother Zan. And speaking of monk, that brings us to what we're dealing with today. Now. Technically speaking, this is another deep dive when it comes to classes. The term is adept on the documents, but for all intents and purposes, the adept is their spin on the monk, much in the same way that Berserker was their spin on Barbarian. Um, and I, I, um, obviously, I have history with this class, <laughs> given that it's in my fucking namesake. Understatement of the fucking decade. And I would like to, um, this also means that I that I have to delve into the the um, unfortunate pre three e attempts when it came, when it came to when it came to the monk and the, and three and three e. Oh boy, oh boy, well, I've got some things to say about that. Um, but I want, but I imagine that there was a conversation between two employees at T at TSR up in Lake Geneva that went something like this. Hey, let's make a class based entirely on unarmed, unarmored hand-to-hand -hand combat. Cool. What abilities should we give it? Abilities? <laughs> now, it now, in fantasy terms, monk hat. It, despite what it's supposed to be, it's be, it's become you know East Asian style martial artist. Um. Be mostly, be mostly, be mostly because of the fact that we're still we're still dealing with the ripple effect at at the time when D and D was coming out of the of a lot of kung fu movies showing up in um gr in grindhouse cinema, i.e. ghetto theaters, same place where you see a whole lot of exploitation films. Um. The the funny thing is is that the is that the style of the style of monk in D and D has nothing in common with either Eastern or Western style monks. <laughs> oh. The closest it has is the, if you want to get to Eastern style monks is sort of kind of but not really the Shaolin kung, kung fu schools, but uh, again, <laughs> like I said, not really. Yeah, even even that's a stretch. Now. The first version of monks goes all the way back to Blackmore, which was a and it was a subclass of cleric. Um, you had to have a high wisdom. You had to be lawful. Um, you didn't get armor, but you got AC that improved with levels. You got multiple unarmed attack and scaling fist damage, which at 16th level could go up to 4d10. Which even my even my modern numbers is ridiculous. Um, you'll also slow fall, dodging ranged attacks, charm resistance, quivering palm. Basically, the a lot of the abilities when it comes to the monk over the years have been relatively consistent. And, th but for some reason, it had thief skills, a hit di the same hit die for wizards, and proficiency with all weapons. I. Don't know. I don't know why it would have the same amount of proficiencies as a fighter, but okay. Proficiencies as a fighter, squishy as a wizard. Great job. Yeah, be poster child for a glass cannon. Um, 
it would later get re- it would later get redone as the mystic in the rule cyclopedia which would be closer to the monk it was a, that was established in AD&D being a full on independent instead of a pr- instead of a proto um now the AD&D version it fe- it came off like a wet fart it was even last in the list of cl- list of classes. I put it right up there with things like duelists and assassins of think of things that nobody was really thinking through at the time. And, and yeah, ass- yeah, assassins got better later on, but first edition AD and D assassins were shit. <laughs> there are a lot of things in AD and D that were shit. Now, interesting. First off, this is this is. Some of you are. Some of you have probably heard me brought up, bring up a term called MAD, multiple ability dependency. This is when a given class requires a high ab- is recommend to have a high ability score in at least three abilities. This, if you think about it, with say a fighter, the only really ability, the only ability scores you really need to worry about are going to be strength and con. Yep. For a for a for even the A D and D monk, you needed you needed to have a you needed to have a good amount uh you had you need you had ability score minimums in four different abilities. Um you start you started with either two D four plus one plus one and then con bonus or 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 if somebody doesn't want to do the math, six hit points, you couldn't wear armor and had a natural AC of nine. And keep in mind, this is the Thaco days, where where the be- where the best AC was negative ten, and the worst AC was ten. You were basically dead every time. <laughs> yeah. Um. <coughs> even ma- even magic users throwing darts could do more damage than the monk, and do it at range. However, and I die. Yeah. However, high-level monks in AD and D were significantly more over the top. You know, immunity to disease, poisons, eventually aging, AC that was be- that was better than plate while they're still naked, fists that counted as magic weapons for hitting ghosts and undead, and nigh invulnerability to falling damage. The return of quivering palm that could make your heart, heart target's heart stop immediately or days later if you felt like it. Um, uh, and ha- and having defensive abilities, and having the only D twenty weapons in the game. Um, AD and D second, it the monk was demoted from a full class to a priest kit, um, which uh, first appeared in Spells and Magic, which I have, and Faiths and Avatars, which I do- which I have only digitally, um. They didn't get to wear armor. They would just get a AC bonus that increases as they level to a ma- to a, to a maximum of two AC at level f- at level fourteen, which is less shit, but still shit. If you're at level fourteen, you should not be having a positive AC unless you're a, unless you're a squishy. Um. They also got access to a handful to a handful of spheres for some reason. Um, they drop turn undead, but instead get to save versus spell against detection, scrying, and mind reading. Constant access to free action, and don't gain don't grant a bonus to opponents when attacking with bare hands. Um, but o- but overall. Much like a, much like a lot of these early instances, it wasn't getting a whole lot of use. And if some and if somebody wanted to do a monk in eight in AD in AD and D, I would have just told them just stick with priest. Um. Then we get to third edition, and oh boy, ooh. where they bring back a lot of the things that we saw in first, like <sighs> quivering bomb. And immunity to poisons and aging and all that fun bullshit. Oh, this one. Ugh. I I was dread. I I knew I was gonna have to talk about this eventually. There is there is some there was something that was put up by the brilliant gamesologist called the t- called the tier system. I've we talked about it a while back when we were discussing the druid and bring and bringing up the whole Godzilla thing. Um. 
Monks are... It, it's still doing this... They have an exotic weapon proficiency that's just so that they could use... Just so that they could use... Um, nun just so that they could use stuff like nunchucks. Um, as well as quasi-magic in the form of key, but the key approach was just... Your melee attacks are considered ma are considered magical for the purpose of DR. So, not exactly what I'd call useful for what's supposed to be quasi magic. They are tier five, right up there with the healer, soul knife, and an unoptimized fighter. A tier five for for those who don't recall is capable of doing one thing not all that well, and it and is out and is often going to be outclassed. Um, Ninja from Complete Adventurer was also this, as well as the, as well as the infamous Complete Warrior um, Samurai. I.e. the... And, to be fair, the Oriental Adventure Samurai was also, was also Tier 5. Um, but because, because, of, because of this kind of setup, and the fa and anything that they can do could probably be done with magic items that they probably can't even use. Their damage is shit. Their armor class is shit. They can't hit shit. Why would you give a melee centric class a three fourths base attack bonus progression? <laughs> and let's not forget that you that um they have been they have they are treated as the poster child for mad because you need. You need strength to make up for the lack of weapons, dex to make up for the lack of armor and for combat reflexes, con because because it because it's a because it's supposed to be a front line fight like a fighter and not a second line like say a rogue. Um, wisdom because because of because of the AC bonus that 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 they can get. As well as sa as well as messing as well as adjusting the saving throws for quivering palm and stunning fists. This is the this is the reason why. It why it's um why why it's t why it's at that level at that level of tier, um, but because of the passes, it was treated as a dip class. Um, when three point five came along, they got an extra feed at level one. These. The um, slow fall progression was a was a bit was a bit better, and their capstone got even worse since they were only a native outsider instead of a full on outsider. Um, but the fourth edition the fourth edition monk doesn't suck, and I'd s and actually did actually did something actually did something unique with monks. What a shocker! Fourth edition doing something unique. I feel like I say that every week. Probably because it's true. But they were they were a they were introduced in Player's Handbook three. Um, before that, people just said just do a dual wield ranger build, but but use fists as the dual weapon, which not ideal, but okay. Um, they are a psionic striker that doesn't use the psionics rules. Um, and Instead, of, instead of be instead of being wuxia but not quite, they're more, they they more like they came they came off more like like a fighting game character. They are they are mobile as fuck. There's the fact that several of their powers are referred to as full disciplines, which which count as both a move and an attack at the same time. So, for instance, Dragon Tail can can let can can let you attack and switch positions with with either an ally or an enemy. Um. And bec and because of the fact they introduced a magic item known as Key Focuses, um, they can still they can still get magic item like attack bonuses, without at without actually wielding a weapon. Um. And when it comes, and when it came to the vanilla fifth edition monk, um, I'd say it's still, I'd say that one's still pretty decent. Um, I do, I do prefer the full, I do miss the full discipline effects from from four e, but the five e monk isn't that bad. In fact, from what I've seen, 
it seems to be a relatively po relatively popular pick. Thank you for that. It's one of the few classes that gives you abilities at basically every single level. Or at the very least, during the, the typical spread of levels that you're actually going to be playing, which is 1st to 7th or 1st to 12th. Out of the monk is jam-packed. You actually feel as if leveling up gives you new stuff. It's novel. Yeah, um, I, I do. I'm not. F there's been there's been some debate about whether or not it's whether or not it was a good or bad idea to have unarmed strikes not count as a weapon in their own right. Um, I I'd pro I um I'm in the I'm in the camp that may, that maybe it maybe it should. Simply because I want to see the ridiculousness of a of somebody of somebody silvering their fists. <laughs> I did that once with a dragonborn's natural claws. Mm -hmm. Plus, legitimately uh, made his made his claws silvered so that he could hit things with you know. Although some someone did ask me if the, if the, if they could get away with that because th because this was right after the man with the iron fists had come out. And he wanted to do something akin to that. And I was like, "Yes, <laughs> you could go with that. You have you have shiny silver fists, and um, everybody's going to notice because, well, you tur you turned your you turned your fists shiny." And I I had made it clear to him that this isn't a case of oh it's oh it's a little bit shiny. No, you no you you essentially have the hands of the silver surfer. <laughs> Believe me. Um. And to be quite honest, a lot of good examples of monks that I see that I see in in fantasy games tend to have key as a mon as a mana equivalent. Um, as crunchy as anima gets, that's a perfect example right there. Yeah, and e even with even with that, there's but l i l um the one. T the one time I made a Wulin Sha class, very early in Fourth Edition's run, I was doing I was doing something similar. We all know that the true expression of a monk is that it's a psionic class. Well, that's what it was in Fourth. I was just about to ask that question: Was it a psionic class in Fourth? And I think, yeah. Yeah, it was a psionic class, but it didn't use the PowerPoint rules that psionics had in um, Fourth. Right, that was just its power source, mm -hmm. which also which is thematically it, incredibly useful. It also means that mechanically they didn't always have the same Nova issues you have with many psionics. But of course, from what you've told me in fourth, Nova issues with psionics in general weren't as prevalent as they were in third. No. no. Um. Now, I I will note as an aside, as I mentioned during the during the um, FF Legend, um episode of Geek Watch. The 13th age version of Monk is one of my personal favorites because it gives them a f instead of doing flurry of blows, they have a full-on custom combo system. Um it's the com the comparison that I'd ma that I'd make is the is say the Swordmaster in Warham Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning or the um pugilist slash monk in Final Fantasy fourteen. But Exactly. Which that brings that brings us to the level up version of the of the monk. And now they've 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 referred to it as a adept. I'm not I'm which they they said they said that it allows them to portray a wide variety of unarmed combatants. Normally, I would tilt my head at that explanation, but given the given the fact that the classes that we have seen up to this point have a strong sense of narr of narrative theming and narr and a um, narrative well path, I'd say I'd say the name change is somewhat justified in this case. Um. Now, when I'm inclined to agree, and we're probably once we get to the abilities, we're going to come up on that basic immediately. Mm -hmm. They do have a they have a um, 
they have a they have a sidebar about ar about archetypes which they're going to be introducing which um they'll t which they'll talk about later um but it it looks it looks like the idea of archetypes is going to be an, actually no it is going to be later on in, later on in the document um let's see it's still 1d8 per per le per level the hit the hit points and hit die haven't changed um doesn't look like proficiencies have, cha have changed either. Let's see, then at first level we have Ardroit Defense instead of Unarmored Defense, which you can either e either you can be proficient with light armor, and while you're wearing it, replace your Dex mod for your for with your Strength mod for AC. If you know Adept Speed or an Exploration Knack or any other that has it as a requirement, you can use them while wearing light armor. Or you can go with good old-fashioned unarmored defense, which works the same way. You remember when you remember when we praised the juggernaut rule that you got that you got at first level for the Berserker? I see this as the same I see this as the same thing, but for the adept. Um, so the first thing that I've marked in blue. Yep. Adroit defense at uh, first level. You learn special defensive technique. Choose one of the following options. There's the usual unarmored defense. And then there's Brutal defense. Mm -hmm. Proficient with light armor. When you're wearing light armor. Oh, Monk, are you there? I'm still here. You were cut. You were cutting in and out. Is it um, for some reason on my end? Yeah, on mine too. Oh shoot! Uh, I was wondering what was going on. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Do I sound better now? Yeah. Yes. Let's try that again. Brutal defense, you're proficient with light armor. While you're wearing light armor, you replace your dexterity modifier with your strength modifier for AC. Then they future-proof it, and they say if you have any kind of exploration knacks that would have had some negative interactions with you wearing armor, you don't have to worry about those. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's it's marked in blue for a reason. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Then we then we have the we have the martial arts um, feature, which I don't I don't see an, I don't see anything in it that's diff that's all that different from from the de from the default um, using dex instead of strength check um, a d four a d four in, in instead of normal damage. Um, and the and the whole thing of using an attack action with a unarmed strike or that for, as a for as a bonus mm -hmm. yeah so martial arts is exactly the same um it is get this is getting they are doing combat maneuvers which make which um makes perfect which makes perfect sense um and it and of course the with the with the ones that with the ones that you can get that you can get once again once again I will state that um I li I I like the I like the overall idea of ha of having man of having maneuvers I do think I do think that the I do think that I that we still have some it we still have some issues when it comes to um certain certain specific maneuvers, but the overall package of the idea, I don't think we've had any issue with. Um. Yeah, it's interesting, I suppose, g given the current list of combat traditions that you have access to, mm -hmm. some of the, when we eventually do the subclass hour, I think that some of them are going to draw on providing you with additional combat traditions for the sake of juicing up the subclass a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like a, maybe a fey themed adept for whatever reason, focusing on a mist and shade or whatever. 
I think it was Mist and Shade. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see. Then at second level, you get Exertion Focus, which is basic is basically the basically their answer to key. Um and start with Fluria Blows, Long Step and Patient Defense. Um I think the I think they just I think the reason they retitled it is is simply because they're tr- simply because they're trying to go for a broader um net than the than the um vanilla monk So the vanilla monk is still is still trying to do the whole kung fu, but not quite. That's not where they're going. In fact, exactly. In fact, um, in that ar- in that archetypes um, sidebar that they meant that they mentioned a few pages beforehand, they br- they bring up a possible example of um, unarmed gladiators. But other than the name change, exertion focus is basically key. Um, you also get an exploration knack, which we've talked about. Um, a at third level, that's when we start do we start doing the whole ar- we start doing the whole archetype thing. Um, let's see, and Do Doku is Doku has arrived. The eternal arbiter of the late and the gay is my job. <clears throat> Welcome. We're talking about monk in all but name, and also, you know, a class that is like monk. Yeah, I was uh, reading back about that. <laughs> I have a feeling, uh, feeling the host of the monastery is going to have quite a bit to say about this. Oh, oh I, yes, he has. I, 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 I already did, especially when it came to the third edition monk. Ooh. That thing, that thing's got a shelf in the Book of Grudges. <laughs> oh, well. I would say I'm surprised, but that would be a lie. Yeah. Um, let's see, at, thir- at third level, also at third level, um, focus feature with, and every level after every level after that, you get you get one of you get one of a set of features, and there's there's a l- basically it's focus feature seems to be the um, answer to key powers. And there's a lot more than there were in vanilla. In vanilla, yeah, there are only like th- there are only like three. Here, there were only. Go ahead. There were only a few. Yeah. There were only and a few, it and turned more... it into a very customizable class on its own. Yeah. It's fucking blue on its own. Mm-hmm. Um, there's twenty three different skills under focus feature. Yeah. Some of some of them requ- some of them require exertion. Some of them don't. But I look at this as a sent. It o- it is almost them doing a fe- them doing a feat system the way I'd pref- the way I'd usually prefer it. Um, because this the sole purpose of focus feature I think is to establish the monk's fighting style. I mean this. You've got some of the classics, you know, mm-hmm. deflect missiles and all that fun stuff. But there are some really cool other things here. <clears throat> oh yeah, there's quite, there's quite a bit. Something that we should something I should note is that this is quite similar. I'll only make a small reference of this. Is how similar this is to the first eye of uh, worlds without number. And how similarly this functions. It's mm-hmm. very build a, a build a class. Mm-hmm. And I, I just adore this structure. It's something that I am increasingly attracted to when it comes to RPGs. And in fact, nowadays, I basically, when I look at RPGs, I pretty much only want this. Or want this with a sprinkle of structure from other sources as opposed to the other way around. But... As far as it comes to leveling up 5e, this is the closest you're going to get to it, is having a sort of warlock character approach, which I, I'm just a huge fan of. Yeah, and the thing is with focus, I think that's the reason why when we look at the um, level chart for 9th and 10th level, it can get away with this whole, with not putting anything, any features there, simply because um, 
You're getting you a, get you're getting a new focus feature every level after third. At and after. So mm -hmm. by the time you get to the end of your class at twenty, you've got eighteen foci. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be delicious. I will note. I, mean, I will note that so, that some of them have that have that dreaded. You can't use that this after. You can't use this again until you do until you do a rest, which we've we've gone we've gone over that plenty of times. We're not fans of it, but it's one of those things that we kind of have to put up with. Well, Wait. some of these are actually totally fine when it comes to the shorter. Let's 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 dive into these. We're sort of down, dancing around them at the moment. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that we should start off with probably is the battle dance, mm -hmm. as that is there are several different features that rely on this. You gain proficiency in the performance skill as a bonus action. You can spend two exertion to bob and sway, starting a battle dance. Your speed increases by twenty feet. And attacks of opportunity against you are made with disadvantage. And when an attack of opportunity misses you, you could use your reaction to retaliate with an unarmed strike. This lasts until the end of your turn. Do you, do you, do you know the, uh, the other name for the battle dance? I do the not. Dempsey, the Dempsey roll. <laughs> I, did. I did not uh, expect that. <laughs> Actually, think about it. Go watch Hajime no Ippo again or read it again. <laughs> That's I, the fucking Dempsey roll. I, Bob and Weave, and when they punch at you, you'd KO them. Um, at, at, we've all seen Dodgeball, so we all know the four D's. <laughs> dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. That's five. So next one up is Battle Meditation. This is one of those famed, can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest, but this is actually fine to restrict on this on that basis. It's one of the few instances in which I'm happy with it, because as an action, you could spend one hit die to regain 1d4 exertion. You can't use this feature again until short or long rest. And that's fine, because you're, gaining, you're regaining this other pool of resources. You're refreshing this other pool of resources which you're going to make use of in order to use several other abilities, some of which you wouldn't have been able to use again until a shorter long rest. So it's basically a basically a recharge feature. Mm -hmm. And a recharge feature itself can't be, probably shouldn't be used multiple times. Like It probably shouldn't be like an at-will power. <laughs> you know, you gotta put some kind of timer on it. Mm -hmm. Did did someone melt Satan out of the middle of Kakaitis? A skill that allows you to re to refresh your resource in the middle of battle? <laughs> and a resource you spend, like, points in the middle of battle? It's just an ether! It's an ether that you can use for your MP! I have, no idea what he's saying. I have no idea what he's saying. What is he saying? <laughs> I'm talking about Final I Fantasy. Have no reference for any of this. One, it's he, it's a Final Fantasy reference. One, it's an FF reference. Nice Two, it is him. It is him being facetious because of how, because of how many times we've seen over the years the whole this cool ability you can only use once, and then you've got and then you've got it. Then you've got to sleep around for an for four hours. It's yeah. very annoying. Uh, next up is Close Soul. When you make a saving throw, this one has. This is where we start getting into prerequisites. Ninth level mm. is your prerequisite for this. When you make a saving throw, you could use your reaction, spend two exertion to gain advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects until the beginning of your turn. This is. Um, I'm gonna mark this in yellow. This is kind of cool, but like it's it's expensive. Yeah. It is, it's really expensive. It, it is expensive, considering that at ninth level you only have fo four bonus exertion on top of your normal exertion pool of two times your proficiency bonus. So at most you have twelve exertion, and spending two for I can have an advantage on rolls against specifically magical effects and spells, and only after I've made another saving throw. You know, if ex if advantage and disadvantage work, I said this before, but if advantage and disadvantage work the same way as Boone and Bane do in Shadow of the Demon Lord, I could, in this case, I could justify it being that expensive. Yeah, but it, it, it's not. It's not the same. 
Oh. Also, advantage and disadvantage tend to be boring bonuses and well, stuff like that. But in this case, you know. The, the boringness is one thing, but the, the, reason why I've, the reason why I've always been kind of critical about advantage and disadvantage is that um, it's kind of swingy. Well, that's that's not a point to be critical on. That's a boon. If we're evaluating it on the structure of Shadow of the Demon Lord, no. Uh, that is, that's a benefit, is allowing it to be swingy rather than just introducing uh, sort of minute additives or penalties. But the, the, the real issue here is that we should, we should go down to deflect spells, which has two requirements. It has deflect, it says defect missiles, which is a funny typo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <And> I, uh, <laughs> Defecation missiles, and ah! the when you are hit by a ranged spell attack that deals damage, you can use your reaction and spend two exertion to deflect the magic. When you do so, the damage you take from the attack is reduced by 2d10, plus your dexterity modifier, plus your def adept level. And if you reduce the damage to zero, you can spend one exertion to redirect the spell to another target within 30 feet of you as part of the same reaction. You make this attack with your proficiency using your wisdom modifier. If somebody is going to take deflect missiles, which they can do at any point, there's no particular thing. And deflect missiles, as far as I can tell, works Fox identically. Standard. Yeah. To that of fifth edition, yeah. Um, then deflect spells. It, there's a really good chance that that's going to be preferable mm -hmm. to something like Flo's Soul, especially if you build your character in such a way using, for instance, the Origin system, mm -hmm. that you already have some advantages that you can throw out against magic, that you don't have to dip into your class's resource. So, Close Soul, I'm going to mark that, and I might mark that in red. I'm tempted to mark it in red. I think... I'm not terribly interested in it to begin with because it's a, more of a passive ability and I'm not really interested in those. If this was like requirement 5th level, you could get away with this. This is too expensive, it's too high level, and it doesn't really build into some of the other, some of the other elements. I don't think it, I don't think it works. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. It still has the requirement of ninth level and you're still spending 2 exertion to gain an advantage versus with deflect. You actually get the ability to actually deflect. So yeah, fifth level, fifth level would actually make a little bit more sense. But it's like, why would why would I get Colo's Soul? I would just get deflect missiles and then wait for deflect spells. Exactly. And just rem just imagine, not only do you catch the arrow and throw it back at the archer and tell him to fuck off, you catch the fireball and throw it back at the wizard and tell him to fuck off too. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't not the not the fireball, but uh, the firebolt. <laughs> I know. I yeah, it has scorcher. The well, you scorcher brought up blast. a good point about the, the level. Blast. <laughs> the Eldritch <laughs> Blast. <laughs> but, hey, Warlock, hey, fuck you. <laughs> but you did bring up a good point about uh, the level requirement because the very next skill on the list is a fifth level requirement, which and spends to exertion. Yeah. So same. Relatively uh, same cost, a, a different effect, obviously, but I get more accessible at a lower level. So yeah. Although um, distant death dance, I can see that getting some use. <laughs> well, I can see it getting a <laughs> lot of use. My punches are now sixty feet fucking long. Yeah. It. And it's like, oh, I have a disadvantage on melee attacks against creatures more than twenty feet away from me. I have a 60-foot reach. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, whoop-de-doo. It... No, well, I, I think uh, Distance Death Dance is actually much better for what it gives you compared to, hey, I have an advantage on saving rolls against magic mm -hmm. versus let me get a disadvantage, but I get to punch you from 60 feet away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take the latter. Mm-hmm. Um, were there any, were there any others that you were there any others um, that stood out to you that you marked in blue, Ash? I like Mirage Dance in particular. Uh, that provides me with a 
a few different resources, access to a few, sorry, people are messaging me on Discord. I'm attempting to close out of it, and every time I attempt to close out of it, I say click on it, because that X is way too tiny. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's a few different things, like Maneuver Rush, you could use another maneuver that requires one or two attacks from your attack action as part of the same attack action. Uh, that one is interesting to me, it has a little bit of a dumb, a little bit of a dumb restriction for, uh, was that 7th level? Sorry, only a shorter long rest. That's boring. Uh, hooked Sword Stance is interesting. That's something that I noted. I didn't really highlight it in any particular color. Because I said, when you are fighting with a short sword in each hand, you, gain a bo you could use a bonus action and spend two exertion to hook them together to start a Hooked Sword Stance. Until the end of your next turn, your short swords gain the Reach property. If you hit... Target with both swords on the same turn. Target takes an additional 1d10 slashing damage, which is interesting to me. That, that what they're describing there is exactly something pulled from Shaolin Kung Fu. Yeah, it's with, the uh, twin hooks. With Chinese, yeah, the Chinese hook swords, where you can essentially hook the hooks around each other and use it as a semi-flail. Yeah. Oh. yeah I'll combine that with weapon skill and stunning strike and... Uh, Ish. Um. And let's. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Sh when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to things like um. Things like pr things like pressure point secrets. I um. I can I can see myself using that and prop and probably making at least one, at least one Hokuto no Ken joke. I'm just saying, uh, uh, one thing I'm a little bit disappointed in is I'm not really seeing a lot of stuff that would be in this particular, in this list, I'm sure it's elsewhere, mm -hmm. that feeds into a little bit of, like, the psionic influence and stuff like that. This is mostly pure mar- it, not pure martial, I shouldn't say pure martial. Uh, a lot of it is martial-themed. It is, there's a strong- Overshadowing, I feel, of more passive benefits, by and large, and I would like to see a little bit, some different stuff expressed. But there is some cool stuff down at the bottom. It's, I'm, I'm of mixed opinion. This is a good list. I wish it incorporated a little bit more from a character archetype that I am a little bit more interested in, if that makes sense. Well. Uh, I, I understand where you're coming from there, Ash, where mm -hmm. you want it to have a little bit more of the fantastic. <laughs> At least that in, was really in, fantastic. I don't necessarily think of science as being fantastic, but like... Well, the the, the, the literal definition of fantastic, something well, of a fantasy. Well, that's that's sort of what I mean, is... Uh, you don't see you don't see them expressed in a lot of fantasy. There's There's... I don't know how to put this. I'm not. I'm not criticizing. I'm not criticizing the uh, the thing on the basis of them not catering to me in that regard. I'm just slightly disappointed that they didn't. Well, but I don't it, think it has an impact on the on the quality of what they have here. I think what they have here is qualitative. Yeah. Well, uh, true, and uh, ultimately, I think the reason they didn't go with that is because what they went with was. It back up all the way in the entry, power of discipline. Adepts harness mental and physical power through training, an energy they call focus. While this can be fuel for supernatural feats, in essence, it is nothing more than the innate potential every living being has. So they right. are, rather than, than having the psionic touch that, that uh, some monk archetypes have had in the past, it's just, we have trained ourselves to the point of Tip top, tip top peak, peak physical and mental uh, performance. Which thing is is other monk classes would go on and they would use basically a, a nearly identical line and narrative justification for putting popping the supernatural in. Like the supernatural is accessible through our tip top training and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's that's the only. That's my only qualm. It's not a huge qualm. It's I'm sure that there's other room for for the sort of shenanigans that I like. And this, I think, this document 
stands tall in in spite of any of my misgivings or, or wishes for uh, additional catering on that front. Does that make sense? Yeah, you, you you're personally slightly disappointed in certain small nitpicks, but overall, the uh, the class is solid. More than solid, in fact, it's very good. Ash, I'm gonna guess that you uh like the uh the skill shockwave. Let me look at that. Did I mark? Is that marked? I think that is marked. Let's see. Requirement fifth level. You can spend three exertion, expensive, to hit the ground so hard it sends a shockwave in a 40-foot line that is five feet wide. Each creature in that line must make a deck save. A creature takes 46 bludgeoning damage and falls prone on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. I do like that. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I was eyeballing that one. I was like... It might not be the best skill I've ever heard in a D&D character, but just picturing it in my head. It anyway. <laughs> it, it, I it, 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 anyway. Sounds, it sounds pretty damn fun. I will You're note right. that um, when it comes to weapon skill, this is another one of those cases where um, where I struck I struggled to I struggled to figure out why that why they put why they put in that the martial weapon does not does not have the heavy or special properties. Is the is the requirement, especially get especially given especially given certain certain um, bu certain builds of monk that we that we've seen that are util. I mean, for fuck for fuck's sake, look at look at Ben look at fucking Ben K. Yeah, but Ben K is it. Mm, ben K is not a monk. Ben K, if we were gonna go by class styles, um, he'd be some sort of weapon master. Oh. Ben 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 K Ben K, who was of course defeated by Yoshitsune, and followed him forevermore. Um, definitely not a monk in like yes, he had the monk garb and he had the prayer beads, but he also had ninety nine swords on his back. Yeah, and I, I will note that the that um, when it came when it came to that, I was. I was specifically refer referencing the PS2 Genji game. Um, <clears throat> Good game, and he wields a giant club in that one, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that he pared down from a tree trunk. Um, but after after all that, we have battlefield etiquette, which um, after you've fought beside or against any creature for one encounter, you have advantage on charisma checks against it. Which is is cute, but um, but it's it's I wouldn't say it's going to be very impactful. Um, so it's a it's a usual complaint that we have about like oh well you see it's a <sighs> advantage 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 on everything. Advantage is a, is a have good. You done, have you done a have you have you done a po a post on your blog regarding the advantage issue that you have? Because I think you should do that I, one of these. I days. should at this point because I complain about it often enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've been so swamped with writer submissions and people people offering to write for me that I've been uh, I've I've been swamped as of late, but. Yeah. Not, not only does Battlefield Etiquette have the whole advantage thing that we all complain about, but Ash has an additional despair, one that I hear commonly. It just gives me a boost to X. There's no specific effect being described. Why is there no specific effect being described? Well, I know that you, that's that, my complaint about it. I know. <laughs> that is, yeah, that's that's it's not the advantage in of itself. It's just increasing the number. It's basically a percentage. This is a variable. I don't like abilities which come down to percentage bonuses, even if they come down to variable percentage bonuses. I generally want more juice to it. And if you're already giving me juice from something else, that's totally fine. You could you could spice it up a little bit with oh, the percentage bonus, but there's seriously. One there's one other thing. Um, monks are not exactly a, char a charisma... Class. Yeah, they're they're not a they're the, crit is generally a dump stat for monks mm -hmm. or uh, charisma. Excuse me. 
Yeah. Or at least at least uh, a, a not one that's ever prioritized. It's it, it's usually you choose whether you're going to go strength monk or dex monk mm-hmm. and prioritize that. And then you go con and whiz. Those are your three most important. Yeah. I don't I don't see that as being as, as much of a problem. I think people mm. If it like I don't know. It's a, it's a passive bonus and stuff like that. I guess in this instance the advantage on charisma checks is useful for it, but given that you're probably not going to boost up your charisma, I don't know. The the situations in which you're going to just just give them the specific social effect or range of social effects. Choose one of these if you have if you fought beside or against a creature for one encounter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would I would change this to if you fought beside the creature, you have uh, advantage advantage to persuasion, or you get this sort of bonus to persuasion because they are so impressed with your prowess on the field. So, so you're specifically they're impressed with you. Thus, you get an ex- an, an an increase to your persuasiveness with them. Mm-hmm. That's Whereas not what you, I mean, and I also, I wouldn't go with that either because it, intimidation. Well, no, intimidation would be people were... you fought against. Boys, rails. No, this this is on rails. This is one hundred percent on rails because that yeah. wouldn't that wouldn't necessarily be against people that you fought against. You could terrify somebody who you're uh, allied with. Great feature of diplomacy, and that's what you would use as the basis for some specific effect that you would produce by having fought alongside somebody or fought against them. Could be related to interrogation, could be related to finding out more information. Dipl- diplomacy, the, the possibilities are endless. And because the possibilities are endless, advantage on charisma checks is probably the boor- most boring thing that they could have gone with. But that's that's my piece on it. All right. Um see at f- also at fourth we get uh, now um obviously much much like we've done in the past i'm skipping asi because there's nothing to talk about um and also at fourth level you get bonus exertion where your exertion pool is going is going to increase um and i i want i give me a moment because i need i want to look up the um i want to look up the fighter go back to the fighter pdf and and See, no, they did. They did not get bonus exertion. Um, so at fourth level, your exertion pool goes up to five. At fifth level, um, when your proficiency bonus increases, your exertion pool becomes seven, eight, so eight. on. Um, so it's so more more. Ex- I think I think having more exertion is is also going to be means to justify a lot of the um, abilities from focus feature that we saw that we saw as a bit expensive. Yes, and and the bonus exertion is also justified in the fact that since you are trading yourself to peak condition, mm-hmm. essentially, you get more exertion than other people. Yeah, which would make sense even thematically. Mm-hmm. Well, considering that you get bo- uh, bonus exertion at fourth, but then what happens at a uh, fifth level, things like shockwave start to become a lot more interesting. Yeah, because fifth level we get we get we get extra attack. Um, Gosh. and at se- at um at seventh level, um, empty mind, which. Starting at seventh level, you can empty your mind and easily disguise your emotions. As an action, you can spend one exertion to enter a meditative, empty mind state. This lasts for one hour. While in the state, insight checks against you have disadvantage. In addition, you gain advantage on saving throws made against enchantment spells and re- and resistance to psychic damage. Well, if you can combine that with uh, things like maneuver rush, which you get at uh, seventh level, it, there's there's a lot of stuff you can actually do with what they what they've given you. Like, granted, it might not, as you're saying earlier, it might not be the most uh, fantastical thing in the world, but it, they've given you a pretty solid toolkit if you 
if you focus on what you're what you want to do with the character. They you're definitely not going to be a jack of all trades by any means, but if your goal is to just, you know, go in there and yeah, you know, beat the crap out of something with uh efficiency in mind, yeah, you by the time you hit 7, you're pretty well equipped to do that. Hey, I actually I I like quite a bit what they did. Yeah. Reading through everything. Um then we get to the exploration next and we and we've got we have a about a, about a page about a page worth. Um four knacks are all dependent on adept speed. Which your speed and increases by ten feet while you are not wearing armor or wielding a shield. You unless choose... you've got a brutal defense, in which mm -hmm. case you can still wear wear light armor. Which, yeah, that is a, that is definitely future proofing. It seems. Let's let's see. Um, we have Gale. Um, Gale Walk will, will be will be the re, will be the incarnation of Jump Good. Um, and then and then go even further with her with Hurricane Walk, where you can spend an exertion to cast Fly on yourself. And you have advantage on stealth checks related to noise. Yep. Um, and that's why I said that there are four things dependent on it at its speed, because to get Hurricane Walk, you have to get Gale Walk. And mm -hmm. to get Gale Walk, you got to have at its speed and a proficiency with athletics. Which, all things considered, you're probably going to end up taking athletics as a proficiency anyways. I could see it. Um, Something I should have, they're getting into a little bit too feet tree. In these, I feel, and they're they're all things that you're probably going to pick anyway. But we, they're so like like look at how hyperlink these are in comparison to the va probably the vast majority of these. Like, is anybody not going to take adept speed based on how many things either directly or indirectly require you to get adept speed? Well. I mean, even if it, even if none of these things were linked to adept speed, I think people would choose adept speed because it's ten more feet. Mm -hmm. More movement is. I have never seen it be a bad thing ever, because it's just more choices. Because you don't have to move your full 40, 30 feet, forty feet, whatever you might have, but having that option is always good. You never know because you're choosing it as opposed to something else. And so if you consider something like consider something like future proofing, like all this stuff is basically there, there is a hyperlinked set of shit that you are pretty much always going to pick. Adept speed, gale walk, hurricane walk, water walk, wall walk. I think the if you're somebody I who likes additional movement, mm -hmm. you're taking all of these. Um I think the reason I don't I don't mind the linking the um feet the chaining in this case is this this sort of chaining isn't too far as long as this isn't too far removed from the chaining in fantasy craft because where it was where it was a three a three tier setup with not a whole lot else um now not to mention but this is in fantasy craft and it's also diver it's it's um divulging no Jesus, why do I... It's diverging. Always Is it diverting? Di yeah. Diverging from the... From diverging, the of course. Yeah. There we go. It's diverging from the other exploration acts in a, in a pretty hefty fashion, honestly. To be Ash a does have a, a point there. Yeah. Explore a list of exploration acts in every other class we've done uh, tend to be pretty grab-baggy, pick-and-choosy. You don't need things to chain into other things. Yeah, the... Th uh, that I proof of the designers trolling the players. Um, Saying, ha ha, you picked the wrong thing. Now you get fucked. The thing This is one this is one of those situations where I ha I have to wonder if there I have to wonder if there was a back if there if um somebody was suffering from tunnel vision with this particular idea because with some with with some of these, I could see, I could see, I could see some of them um, bre breaking off, breaking off from a chain to an extent. Um, 
but I do I do hope that I do hope that in a later revision, this sort this sort of chaining is is dialed back, or you put or you put in some specific chains for the other classes. I prefer the I prefer the former rather than the latter. All th all things being oh. equal. Or just include more here. Like, think about in the future. Like, right now, it's not that much of a problem because all these things are cool. But consider in the future, they release another set of exploration acts. Are they going to do another set of five chain things so that you're sort of forced to go with one or the other? Are they going to do something where uh, you, you get a number of ones that are cool but they start really interfering with this one singular chain. It, it's something you don't want to introduce unless you absolutely have to. Because it makes future-proofing difficult. It screws up all these other opportunities that you would have to... Because now, going forward, you will have to look at it and say, Okay, everybody's going to take these five with a standard deviation of one or two. Mm -hmm. Like, they might not take one or two of these. But they're going to take pretty much most of these. So now I have to structure all of my future inclusions around the fact that pretty much everybody is going to take all these other ones. But that's an evaluation that you usually make with the core of the class. Mm -hmm. It's oh, usually, thing that, you know? Mm -hmm. oh, the, the thing that's kind of annoying me is... Uh, with wall walk and gale walk is the uh, the two proficiencies associated with each one. Uh, I understand why it's there, but there's there's something about hurricane walk requiring gale walk and gale rock requiring uh, proficiency with athletics. But then water rock, you just have to have it at speed, and then wall walk, you have to have the acrobatics. Like I, there's something about the way that's set up that annoys me. Uh, I th I'm guessing it's because of, I'm guessing it's because of the fact that one of them is on second tier and the other one's on first tier. Yeah, and they're oh, it's like I would expect some sort of follow up or something to connect a uh, wall and water, whereas Gale Walk has its natural uh, progression where yeah, basically you cast fly on yourself. Mm -hmm. But then adept speed, it's like yeah, you, you could just take that. So no proficiency in athletics or acrobatics. You just are suddenly faster for because the uh, it, no the it annoy it, it irritates. You shouldn't me. even need it for a depth. You shouldn't even need a depth speed to grab that thing. It's like screw it, man. Just give. I'm already getting. I think I'm already getting bonus movement from other features. Like just give me. Just let me take it on its own. Mm -hmm. That one doesn't need a prerequisite. Yeah, I feel like wall walk should only require proficiency, and gale walk should only require proficiency, but water and hurricane should require a depth speed. That's the way I would rework it if I had to. I would, I would just say, these are all ninja feats because that's exactly what this is. All five of these knacks are just. I'm turning my monk, or excuse me, my adept into a ninja. That's what these are. These yeah. are outright. I'm turning my adept into a ninja. Which, is, uh, I, which might be why I am whoever. I am holding. I am holding off my, when it comes to when it comes to this because what I what I because what I want to see what I want to see is whether or not they're actually go, whether or not they're going to go half cocked on the idea of using the, using this setup. To build up to build a more gladiatorial type of pugilist. Well, and the other thing I feel like you could do is you could take wall, water, and gale walk and pretty much combine them into the same skill, requiring a proficiency plus adept speed. With hurricane walk being, oh, congratulations! Now you have fly. Yeah. Because it that that seems like it would make more sense and it would be a little more streamlined. But right, like there's. We all have the sensation, for the most part, that this is too joined together. It's 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 not we we don't it, it's diverging too much from everything else that we have as a point of reference. It's making assumptions that we normally treat the core class with, like all right, everybody is going to have this, so we make decisions based on the customizable parts, based on the fact 
that uh, everybody is going to have this. It's so it's some way going to feature with it. It's like, well, this should just be a this should just be a class feature, like a level nine feature, maybe. Who knows? But but, but it's something where one of the gaps are in. I don't. I don't know. I think. Oh, I think the also. Biggest... Sorry, go ahead. I think the biggest gap I see here, Ash, and I don't know if you'll agree with me on this. Not 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 even in comparison to other exploration acts. This is just within Adept itself. Everything we've seen prior to the exploration acts has been build your own. It's a build yeah. your own Adept thing. And yeah, this, in the Fokai section. Yeah, and and while some Fokai had requirements based off other Fokai, it was just one step usually, just one step off. And it was always justified. Or and it was often know. looped. Like, uh, some of the ones required, like, Last Dance requires that you have any, any dance. dance. Mm -hmm. Right? So that gives you, what, like, five other options? Four other options that you could pick from if you want to have access to that? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and whereas this, this is, like you said, it makes an assumption. It, it, it does, in a way, pigeonhole you. It makes it so that you're... You're suddenly wide open. I'm going to take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and build my own, uh, build my own custom adept. Suddenly goes to, but I have to have all of these. Um, um, I feel like if you're able to use water walk, it wouldn't be a stretch of the imagination that you could also you know, move across vertical surfaces. Considering you know you can yeah, jump across liquid elevate. surfaces. That's and, a perfectly good solution. Just consolidate some of them. Mm -hmm. And anyway, um, with the, with all that in mind, it is high, it is high time that we get that we get to the subclasses. What? Well, actually, I have one last observation that made me laugh. I do have to bring this up now that we're out of the the weeds of disparaging this one weird decision made. Mm -hmm. Out of all of the exploration necks that Monk, that, that excuse me, the Adept could have had, religious training <laughs> strikes me as the most... What? <laughs> so it's because, not just me that looked at that one and chuckled a little bit. <laughs> I mean, yes, I understand that some of the Adepts are going to be people who trained in temples and trained, you know, again, Shaolin Monk. Uh, but... Most of the classes we've gone through it has been very separated from the religious connotations of some earlier monk alikes in previous editions. Uh, this this was out of left field and just made me chuckle because I'm like, ah, oh, you wanted to give them you wanted to give them something that was useful from a religious side so that people could. We still spent make so much time thinking about how you could only move in these special ways if you were already able to move in these other special ways. We completely forgot to express the narrative flavor of of being trained in a religious institution. Mm -hmm. Oops. I will say, I actually do like religious training a lot because they give you, you could get, you receive a correct answer from the GM for a question about the object. That can be answered with a yes or no. I actually really like that. I would turn this into religious, I, I might rename it to a religious affinity. Give it a little bit more of a supernatural. I, uh, a a I like vague it. supernatural connotation, sorry. I, I like it because... The, the way you could set this up thematically to spook your entire party. You know, you're dressed, you're dressed as, as a prototypical street brawler, just wrecking house with pick and choose that you've done throughout the, the foci. And then all of a sudden, one of the mooks you've dropped uh, drops an artifact found in a lost and ancient tomb from, an, from some sort of uh, ancient divinity. And this rough and tumble, doesn't even look like he can read, Brawler picks it up. Huh. It looks like this is the the ancient touchstone uh, of... Uh, insert name here. And uh, and then the rest of the party goes, are you on drugs? Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, the one character that I can think of this class fulfilling beautifully 
like without any trouble whatsoever and this is going to sound strange but like this class is perfectly made i have absolute confidence that this one fictional character i could express within this document is teal indeed absolutely yes i could make teal with this with this and i'm not, i'm honestly quite happy about that also yeah. monk monk <laughs> you didn't say that in enough in enough of a Indeed. Well, I, I do have to point out the one reason I like religious training, uh, regardless of uh, the naming convention, is because, and this is this is me as a uh, as my uh, flavor of storyteller. It opens a lot of abilities for me to screw with the party, especially if I know someone is going with this class. Because why are, why are there cat ears? Uh, you're gonna get a yes or no question. <laughs> it it does open it opens certain uh These cat ears of say, old design. <laughs> it does open These certain uh, certain elements for the design. storyteller to kinda kinda screw with people a little bit. It's like why are there why is there a helmet with golden cat ears on it? Uh I wanna use religious training. It, yes or no question. It's like all right. <laughs> Easy it heresy. <laughs> on, a scale, on a scale to on a scale from one to heresy, heresy. The answer is always heresy. But we've got we've got a few we've got a few um monk monk, ent monk entries when it comes to the ways and some of the some of these are going to are going to be me digging through the hell of Unearth Arcana and some of them are not. But can any of them show me the way? Depends on if you have the proper religious artifact or not. Ah, yes! Doku! You took it! Thank you! <laughs> I wanted that, you to pull that. Now do you see why I like that skill? <laughs> I'm just waiting for Monk to tell me he hates me, though. <laughs> for the Ugandan Knuckles meme. Well, I ask questions which you already know the answer to. Oh, but it... <laughs> because the rest of the party doesn't know. Yet. That's true. Bullshit! <laughs> oh, they you all know. We just have to confirm their doom for them. You pick up a misshapen red round object with two large googly eyes on it, sticking out its tongue and making clicking noises. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> the first the first one that I have is a unearthed arcana entry because I I um stupidly put them in alphabetically instead of putting them in by um source. So um astral self which is from unearthed arcana barbarian and monk. Uh, it should probably be noted it is because the Astral Monk also made it into, correct me if I'm wrong, that actually made it into one of the source books. Um, Is that on any of your notes? Oh, no, no, it's no. This was this was in Unearthed Arcana back in August 2019. As far as I know, it ha it hasn't been it hasn't been put into a a official book. Oh, it's in, it's in Tasha's culture and of everything. Oh. Oh. But in any case, I actually ran for one of these monks, which was quite pleasant, because I find them uh, fascinating, among other things. I find that they, they seem to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of crossover with the various, especially my interpretation of the monk as a psionic class. There was even crossover with some of the various... Psionic character options that I released for both my home games and in various products, which was again just a ton of fun. Like the Navigator class, the theme of a, or the Navigator Prestige class, which was themed around being a psionic guide for people who were traveling from place to place, from plane to plane, especially. And that just it, the so much narrative crossover it was delicious. So the. Way of the Astral Self is chock-full of 
narrative potential. It has a lot of potential expressions when it comes to sort of the anti-medieval, like the, back to the pulps, back to the idea that we're in a wider cosmology, there's cool shit happening out there, people are going to different planets, they're going to different planes of existence, different dimensions. It's fun in that regard. And also mechanically, like, I think it would have a lot of... Honestly, some of the some of the core features that you're able to build and choose in choose and build into your monk here sort of step on some of the toes of the way the astral self. So with all that considered, I'm going to give it a thumbs in the middle because a lot of the a lot of the astro way the astral self's wheelhouse has sort of been covered in a few different ways. All right. All we right. can't feel unique as opposed to just, well, we're going to switch up some of the damage you do from maneuvers and exertions and some of your features. We're just going to switch that up to radiant or necrotic as you choose it. Uh, it might take more effort for them to make something more interesting than that. So, yeah, thumbs in the middle. All right. All yeah, right. I, I don't have a lot of input on that one. Mm -hmm. Ed, I don't love it. I don't hate it. Ed, I do think it could be better, but I don't think you're really missing out on anything if they scrapped it either. Um, next, Drunken Master. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> Just up, right? Yeah, they, they, that doesn't even, that shouldn't even be a topic of debate. Well, they, yes. The, it's, it's, keep, um, Doku, keep in mind that this is not, this is not necessarily about how good or bad the subclass is. But what? But what? But how compatible it's going to be with the changes from vanilla to level up? Okay, fair enough. So yeah, okay, I get the mechanics have to have to work properly. Well, conceptually, it, all that it should. It, conceptually, it should be it should be there. Now, how well executed? Eh, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a thumbs up, and here's why: you could easily put in features like. For each, because the the sway of a drunken monk is basically the battle dance that they've provided for in here. And unlike my previous evaluation of the astral self monk, the sway monk, the the drunken master could incorporate features which were like, hey, based on the number of battle dances that you've accumulated, you get a battle dance for free, and based on the number of battle dances that you've accumulated, you get this other numerical bonus. This is the number, you increase the number of rounds that this thing lasts for each battle dance that you've acquired. Right? It well, would be very easy to accelerate the various features that you would be acquiring across building your character, which would, and just improving upon them, making a cooler character based on those. And you could have some other... You have some other features in there, but that's 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 my evaluation of it. Well, also, if you have things like a nimble athlete and power tumble on your character, it becomes a lot more a chaotic but viable. So it, it it seems like it would be fun. All right, next Loop. is is the one. Is the one monk subclass that I said that I said was it that I said was in the wrong book that I said was in the wrong book, and I, I think it's kind I think it's kind of, it doesn't get it doesn't get picked as much in my experience, and that is way of four elements. Mm. Everything right, changed I'll... when the level up nation attacked. <laughs> I'll I'll bite elaborate why, why do you say that? Um. To me, four four elements is very clearly trying to trying to evoke um, Avatar. The on paper, I have absolutely no issue with that. In practice, the issue that I have is with with a lot of with a lot of the subclasses. You have a clear defined line when it comes to what you're going to get out of it. Way of four elements has. Eight has a has a has a bunch of gra has a bunch of grab bags, kind of like an ex kind of like the exploration knack lists, and just and just tells you to go at it instead of instead of theming a a path ar around different elements. Actually, it's a list that's too small 
has too many prerequisites, is too expensive because they didn't want you to have access to spells before certain spells before spell casters would get them. Mm -hmm. And uh it's very easy to chase other people. It's honestly ineffective. If anybody plays it, it's an effective subclass. The problem is you look at it and you're like, Jesus, everything costs so much. Everything is so expensive. And and you get scared away by the description that the class provides you with. However, however, think of it this way. Think of how we already have the pick and choose grab bag of foci. If you adapt the way uh, the four elements monk works to work within that framework, it'd be marvelous. You would be able to build a four elements monk that has less, I guess, less intimidating factors to it because now you can clearly see. Well, yeah, I can get these few things and intermix them with normal foci as well, so that you also don't necessarily hamstring yourself by pigeonholing. I don't know. It, it could work. I think. Uh, what do you think, Ash? Thumbs in the middle there. I'm going to. So I'm going to put thumbs in the middle. No. I'm, so here's the thing. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Okay. The reason I'm going to give it a thumbs up is because they have a, it's not a question of whether or not they will do this at this point. It's a question of whether or not they will recognize that have a, they have a super easy path to make this work how it needs to. And the path is take all the stuff, take all the abilities that you'd be getting from the elemental monk and go ahead and make a unique combat tradition from which maneuvers can be sourced and put a few unique uh, exploration knacks and maybe a few unique foci in there. That's, that's, that's how you go with it. That's all you need to do. Just take the stuff, take the stuff that you've already made, that you already have, make elemental versions of it. Don't mix it in with the spellcasting system. Just take... Elemental version, make elemental versions of the stuff that you've already made and give the way the four elements access to it and a means of accelerating it. Because technically speaking, some, some of the other guys should be able to have access to it. And that wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be a problem if, uh, if the drunken master had access to some sort of fire-based uh, maneuver. We wouldn't really object to that Spitting if they wanted out. to have it. Like, we'd be cool with that, right? Eating fire and spitting it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ex exactly. exactly. Bo right show anybody? <laughs> I'm, I mean, if we really wanted to be on the nose about this, eh, this is kind of the reason I'm thumbs in the middle on this one. For a class that seems to be built based around uh, martial skills, first and foremost, I don't, I don't get a feeling that they really... Uh, War or flushed out a four elements monk to the point where I think it it works with what they've given us thus far. But I do think it's a relatively easy easy way to make a very very well flushed out uh, uh, character framework. And it could be something as simple as, oh, you have a dance. Well, okay. Dance of dance of fire god, dance of wind god, dance of earth god. You, you could do things like that that flush this out a little bit more. But as it stands right now, it's it feels to me like a like an idea, but that's about it. It I don't know. It yeah, there's good reason to have thumbs in the middle because it it's it's not clear that. There's a path they can take to adapt it well, hmm. but it's not exactly the clearest path. Yeah. Um, now next is something that is, thankfully, more straightforward than four elements. Kensei. The Kensei? Um, thumbs up? I'm going to say, guys, I'm just going to give it a thumbs up because... Kensei is all about maneuvers and bas basically having access to having access to more weapons to do monk stuff with. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it's, it's super easy to adapt. It, it just you can literally plug it into the framework they have right now. 
Uh, and I'm going to give a thumbs up as well. I don't have a problem with it, especially considering a lot of the stuff they've given us seems to emphasize being, you know, unarmed versus armed, you know, unarmored versus armored. So it, it gives you a viable, like, well, I don't want to play a guy in a robe that beats each other up with his fist. I want to have, you know, light armor and two swords. Well, there you go. And Kensei could could technically give you the proficiency in some weapons that you would need to do things like the hooked sword dance. Yeah. Um, without having to spend it towards another foci like weapon skill. Uh, I gotta say, I'm, I'm suddenly realizing this is probably the first time I've been this involved with uh, the sub subclass power hour. Mm -hmm. So, next on my list is. Um, the the way of the long death from Sword Coast. Faerun. Uh. uh thumbs down. It's so it's so janky. It's so weird. There's all these features that like don't quite make sense. Uh, like they're and they're very restrictive. Like you can get if you meet these two or three conditions, you can get some hit points back, and it's a very small number of hit points. It's all just it's just weird shit that's done. that's rendered completely superfluous, as far as I'm concerned, by the vast majority of stuff that these people have already invented. Like there's already there's already a maneuver or something from a combat tradition that you could use to regain hit points. That thing already exists. So what you're saying is Way of the Long Death is a weaker, dumber version of the combat maneuvers we already have. Honestly, not necessarily. It's not like a weaker, dumber version of it. It's just like if you wanted to get the stuff that you would specifically get from Way of the Long Death, you could actually find that um, in the various customizable options that you have access to now yeah. and stuff like that, which is... That might sound similar, but it's it's not like they were building off of the weight of the long death and thinking, how do we make this better? It's just in developing a robust monk class and all the different customizable features that they would have access to. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> ultimately, WotC was once again outplayed and outclassed. <laughs> I don't know. On this one, I would give thumbs middle. But it it needs a lot more work. It the way that Kensei could be a, an armed and armored monk. This could add things to an unarmed, unarmored monk that would be worth it. But you're mm. you're you're looking at you're looking at working or reworking a lot of the stuff it gives you to a point where it actually makes it even worth it. The problem conceptually the problem, here's okay a way of saying here's a way of saying it. It is at best, I feel, minor mechanical fodder. I, I'm, you could mine some stuff from it. Yeah, and that's why I kind of give it a th uh, thumbs in the middle. Conceptually, I have no problem with it, but I don't think it's... It's not where it needs to be in order for me to actually say I like it. So, eh, middle. Um, the, big pro the big problem is that it's, it's trying to do monk with elements of, of um, necromancer and as I've as I've as I've talked about in the past, um, kit ba um, whenever you tr whenever you try and do that, whenever you try and do this sort of kit bashing, you end up with problems. Yeah, and that that's kind of that's kind of where I have an issue with it. it. Again, as a concept, I think there's room for for something like this, but as it is right now, it. I don't know what would be easier, reworking it or just cutting it completely. Um, with I'd I'd say I'd say that when it, when it comes to something like way way of long death, um, I prob I probably wouldn't even be using it. Um, next is another um another unearthed arcana entry, this time from twenty twenty subclasses part one, um, mercy. Hmm. I actually, I hope you guys know more about this one than I do because I actually don't know that much about the Way of Mercy. I actually, I know 
I thank goodness I recently watched a Dungeon Cast episode on it. Um, do you want do you want me to go through what do you want me to go through what it's got? Oh, if you have the abilities right in front of you, please. Yeah. Okay, it says monks of the. Um, those who follow the, it does the whole thing with the merciful mask, which is um role, which is essentially role playing. So I'm I'm skipping that. Um. You gain proficiency in insight and medicine, your or your, your choice, and gain proficiency with the herbalism kit and the poisoner's kit. Um. You get hands of healing, so you can spend one key point to touch a creature and restore HP equal to your martial arts die plus your whiz. Um, I think there's already I think there's already one that does something similar. Actually, actually no, I take. Um, you can replace one of your unarmed strikes with the use of this feature when, without spending its key cost when using flurry of blows. Um, hands of harm. When you hit a creature with an unarmed strike, you can spend one key point to deal extra necrotic damage equal to one roll of your martial arts die. If the creature is incapacitated or poisoned, they instead take necrotic damage equal to three rolls of your die instead. You can only use this feature once on each of your turns. Yeah, this is this is sounding much more familiar now. Uh, thumbs in the middle. This has a similar issue to the to the previous to a lot of the previous ones. Where like a lot of just by virtue of creating a robust class, they've a lot of these don't even really serve as great mechanical fodder to mine. You have narrative fodder that you could mine and decide that like you know. I don't know. I don't, like you could strip mine that and say, all right, well, maybe when you use, maybe we'll make a unique combat tradition. Maybe we'll make it so that when you use certain combat traditions, you get to use these other abilities that are more themed with the manga. Like those, those are more supernatural. They're more supernaturally influenced, and they don't really have. Because they're in base 5e, or not base 5e, because they're made for 5e, they already don't have a lot of mechanical meat to them. So that's two... That's two ways in this in which this, like, subclass diverges from what we would normally consider to be a good fit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a thumbs down. Um, I, just, and- I don't think it's that good of a fit. And I, I personally don't like it, and but that's just personal reasons. Mm. Objectively speaking, from uh, mechanics and application, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. But I also still don't like it. So, barely, barely, barely thumbs in the middle. Oh. I, I think you could do something with it, but it's not anything I would ever play. Uh, next is open hand. If I remember correctly, I'm not terribly familiar with uh, what they've done with with it recently, but I I have played open an open hand monk at least twice in the past, so I like it, but I'm not familiar if they've changed or I'm not aware if they've changed any mechanics to a significant degree. Open so ha- middle. Open open hand is ba- is basically for people who wanted to who wanted to do the three point X style monk, um, open it ha- so open hand technique so flurry of blows can push knock prone or immobilize wholeness of body, heal heal yourself th- heal yourself three t- three times per long rest tranquility apply a sanctuary spell to yourself once per long rest, and quivering palm. As the- okay, so they haven't changed too much. In that case, mm-hmm. thumbs up. Um, what about you, yeah. Ash? This is another one where it's just kind of accelerating the things that monks are able, already able to do. Um, yeah, it's, it's thumbs up. It, similar to the Kensei, it's like, okay, this subclass was based around take things that monks can do and make them better at it. Just accelerate that with more conditions and... Things of that variety, when you use Flurry of Blows, you're able to do extra effects. So, perfect fit. There's there's nothing 
that stops you from making the monk cooler in the level up monk. So thumbs up. Yeah. It also makes sense considering well, you're either going armed or unarmed. So yeah, I can do I can do cool shit faster. All right, deal. All right. Next is um, Way of Shadow, which <laughs> is which um is a ninja. For all intents and purposes, it's a fucking ninja. I'm going to come in and say thumbs up, mainly because Way of Shadow mixes with Ash's favorite combat m uh, maneuvers table in Mist and Shade. Oh, that's what I said earlier. Re remember at the very beginning of this, I said they're going to be able to juice up some of the subclasses by offering you additional combat maneuvers. Yes. Yep, and Mist and you you nailed it. Miss and Shave would be the and that is my favorite. <laughs> I is. I know it is. You've mentioned it I think almost every time we've had a martial class at this point. Yep, that sounds about right. I've never played it, but I'll defer to uh, both of you and I'll go ahead and say it works. Thumbs up. Um now the next the next one was was on was on one of the live was on one of the um, live streams. And I think I think it was in a U a UA um, soul knife. Soul knife. I it, this is where we go back to the issue of of psionic marshals, psionic maneuvers, and things of that variety. Wait. Austin, did you you said soul knife, right? Yeah. And is this marked as an unearthed arcana? Um this is marked this is marked as a as a um as it was transcribed from a live stream. Okay. I presume that's the Mike Merle's Happy Fun Hour or something like that, because the Soul Knife was transcribed into was a uh, rogue class. I assume. Yeah, I was about to say we did discuss we did discuss the Soul Knife back when we looked at rogue. All right. Yeah. All right. My my bad. We're my bad. We're skipping that one. Well, if you said it's from a live stream, it's probably from the Mike Merle's Happy Fun Hour. In which case, there's, there's a pretty good chance that he actually like. What are the features? Okay. He probably started doing it for uh, for Monk. Because mm -hmm. Soul, Soul Knife is in Tasha's Cauldron. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Let's see. Monk's Soul Knife. Um. You can use psionic energy to d to manifest blades that disrupt your foes' minds. Your unarmed strike deal your choice of psychic, piercing, slashing, or bludgeoning damage each time you hit. In addition, you can use a bonus action to increase the reach of your unarmed strikes by 30 feet until the end until the end of your turn. Let's see, psych also gets the uh, you also get five new key, new um, flurry of flurry of blows effects from psychic slash. Whenever you hit a creature with one of your attacks granted by flurry of blows, and that attack deals psychic damage, you can impose one of the following effects. Um, life drain, you gain temp HP equal to half damage, invoke terror, um, wisdom saving throw, or they become frightened of you until the end of your next turn, invoke wrath, um, disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than you, astral slide, you teleport the target up to 10 feet to a destination you can see, and synaptic overload, the target gains vulnerability to psychic damage until the end of your next turn. Um... At sixth level, they gain aura sight. So you. Yeah, so this, this is significantly different from the rogue soul knife in a lot of ways. Um, which is ba yeah. basically a wisdom save to do scan. <laughs> um, let's see, at eleventh level, you get spectral blades. So once during your turn, you can choose to forgo one unarmed strike in place of forcing a creature within the reach of that attack to make a dex save. On a, fa on a fail, it takes your unarmed strike damage, or half that damage if it succeeds. So this, yeah, at this point, I think I've heard enough, is uh, 
I will put this as thumbs in the middle. This is a similar situation to whenever it comes to martial classes which have supernatural abilities, particularly when it comes to specific, you know, they might not be all that supernatural to begin with, but you take it and a uh, sp specific subclass it has supernatural features, which often are not terribly well expressed in 5th edition, but we've, we've obviously evaluated them and decided whether or not the folks at EN World would be able to translate them well. Our common complaint or observation or whatever have you is that you would probably need to make a new combat tradition and a new set of maneuvers or a new set of whatever resources it is that the class already has access to and say, okay, we're going to give you access to this as part of the subclass and we're going to make sure that just in case we decide anybody else has access to this, you're going to be the best at using it. And I think that applies to the Soul Knife as well. I think this is another instance in which you would possibly you would share it with the Sinite and the Soul Knife of the Rogue. Whatever combat tradition would develop psionic uh, maneuvers would be something that, okay, this given subclass of, of monk would have access to those. Let's see, I'm going to have to... Have access to those, and the Sinite would have access to those. I'm going to have to say thumbs in the middle as well. I can under I can see where this would work from a uh, a character justification uh, justification perspective where yeah, the monk is meditated so much to the point where yeah, he can be unarmed but has, you know, psychic daggers, you know, all a Psylocke style. That's I could see that working and I think that would be really cool. Like I like that from a conceptual standpoint. My my apprehension is it needs to be better defined because as it as I'm hearing it right now, it sounds like it's overcomplicating the mechanics, and uh, I I don't know how I feel about it from that standpoint. So, it solid 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 thumbs in the middle. Honestly, um, I think with what Ash has actually outlined here regarding what the general trend of there is this subclass that can do X thing really well, and the best way to express that in this adept class is to basically create a new martial tradition with new maneuvers for it to be used that way. That sounds like it would actually be fantastically easy in certain respects i mean not easy no 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 game balancing is easy i know that but that sounds much easier to to adapt than some of the more like like the again the way of long death um some of the more gishy skitchy kit bashing mm -hmm. um so I don't see why this one couldn't be thumbs up because if all we have to do is create, give it its own combat maneuvers, give it its own uh, combat tradition, and then say, yeah, if you choose Adept Soul Knife, you get access to this set of combat maneuvers in this combat tradition, and you can gain them faster and get more of them than anyone else. Oh, don't get me wrong. I really want to give this one a thumbs up, and that's not just because Psylocke happens to be one of my favorite Marvel characters of all time. I like the concept of a martial character who is unarmed and focused so much on meditating that they can use psychic energy as literal blades. I really, really, really love that concept. But I don't know enough about it mechanically to give it a thumbs up. So I'm not going to go as far as to say I want to cut it. Like no, I think you guys should keep this one, but work flush it out a little bit more. Work work it out a little bit better, so I can, so I can actually give it a. Yep. Um, next is Sun Soul. From which uh, is straight which is straight out of Xanthar, and this is if Astral Self pro provoked a bunch of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure jokes. This provoked a bunch of DBZ jokes. Oh. 
Oh, I give this one a thumbs up. Even if they don't, so this this is another area where I would actually be. I was initially tempted to say, "Oh, well, similarly to the other supernatural classes, they could just add a, a set of supernatural uh, combat traditions and specifically themed to what this subclass would have access to." I'm actually going to rescind that. I'm gonna I'm gonna res resist that urge ever so slightly. I can't rescind it because I haven't said it yet. And say <laughs> that uh, you would be able to just give it features which produce these other supernatural effects, but keying off of and using as a resource the things that the monk already had access to. In this specific instance, I would say you would only be able to pr provoke or produce proc these, um, like the, the spirit bomb or the spirit blast uh, things where you're doing radiant damage and stuff like that, I would say you were only able to be, to produce these if you were spending exertion points. And I would say that, like, at first, okay, you need to spend exertion points just to do these. So maybe they're competing with your... Maybe they're competing with your maneuvers and things of that sort, their combat traditions to begin with. But as time went on, I would say, okay, you can produce these if you spend exertion points, or honestly, that might be the first thing I go with. You can produce these effects if you produce... Yeah, yeah. let me rescind everything I just said, but not everything I just said. Uh, you would be able to produce these effects if you were using your combat maneuvers. Fighting is what allowed you to use these other abilities. Spending resources on difficult to produce or diff difficult to master abilities is what would allow you that would build up your resource pool for these other supernatural abilities and that would just give you more supernatural abilities as time went on so if you're using as an example if you're using your maneuvers at third level that allows you to that fuels your ability to fire beams of sun of radiant energy at your enemies and then at seventh level Using your maneuvers is what empowers you to throw a spirit ball, and so actually, on. And so that's that's actually a really good uh, that's a really good point that you bring up because it would help streamline a lot of uh, at least from what I've seen a lot of the issues when it comes to mechanics with the subclasses we've been talking about. If you made it something as simple as while while you're exerted or you you've spent exertion points on this, if you are if you are of this subclass or you are of this skill, this is a bonus effect you get. As opposed to making it a completely separate resource pool. It's like a more of a ladder rather than an additional pool. Yeah, it's like I want to use Shockwave. I've spent I've spent the exertion points. Boom, it hit. Well, every every monster that managed to save, they take the normal effect. But everyone that failed on their save, uh, I'm uh, four elements. Uh, fire. Well, they take fire damage. Like you could actually, you could actually streamline it and make it. Yeah, it would be longer. It would be longer of a read, but you could apply it to all these subclasses without detracting too much from the already established mechanics. That, that might be the better way to go about doing this. I, th I think you're thinking of something slightly different, where they modify the things that you already have access to, so that the things that you have access to are producing slightly different effects, right? Well, like if also, you're using shockwave, you get to you get to turn it into fire. You get to turn it into ice. Is that the idea? Yeah, and there and there's that might just be for the path of four elements uh, in terms of what you're on. But if you're say you know, uh, on the uh, the site uh, essentially the psychic dagger, you could do different things with that. But let's say it only works under different conditions. Wait, right? why are you? Why are you? Here's honest? the thing. I was my suggestion was slightly different, or depending on your view of things very different where it wouldn't be it wouldn't be modifying the things that you already had access to like it wouldn't be modifying your access to these different combat traditions what i'm thinking of is okay you use shockwave you use this um you use some axe maneuver i do pick a maneuver any maneuver whatever it happens to be lunge or whatever it is and because you use lunge now you get to use this separate resource pool. 
because it's been fueled by you using lunge. And you use you use you use the maneuver, so now you get to do this other thing. And it is this other thing. It's not something that modifies lunge to where it changes the damage type or gives you extra damage. It's like, all right, now that you've exerted yourself in this way, now you have access to this other list of abilities. But it's still gate kept between spending you exerting yourself in a very literal and me and metaphorical sense. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm viewing it more in the way that we were talking about a Gale Walk and Hur uh, Hurricane Walk earlier, where right. you do have access to a secondary ability, but it's only after you, well, you have to exert yourself just to, in this case, use Shockwave to begin with. So now that you've exerted, then you now have access to this ability that you've been granted due to your subclass. And, and again, I think that would be able to streamline the mechanics a lot easier from, at least from the bit I've heard. Move. But that ah. that's just my opinion. Right. And these are two diff perfectly serviceable ways of doing it. Yeah. Um, All I have to say is praise the sun. Um, lastly is um, Way of Tranquility, which was in Unearthed Arcana Monk. I have no... I have Can no uh, way of tranquility mm -hmm. from our Earth Arcana. I I don't think I've ever heard about this one. So way of tranquility. Ah, yeah. thumbs not existent. <laughs> I I don't know anything about this one. So uh, what, what's it from? I just said just... on Earth on Earth Arcana monk. Uh, it is on Earth Arcana. Okay. Uh, give us a quick rundown of the abilities. What have we got? All, all right. So at the at the start, let's see. Way of tra way of trank way of tranquility. First, we have path of tranquility. When you choose this tradition at that third level, you can become an island of calm, even in the most chaotic of situations. With this feature, you can cast the Sanctuary spell on yourself. No material component required, and it lasts up to 8 hours. Its saving throw equals 8 plus um, proficiency bonus plus whiz. A creature that succeeds on the save is immune to the effect for 1 hour. Once you cast the spell in this way, you can't do so again for 1 minute. You also get Healing Hands. You have a pool of magical healing power that replenishes when you take a long rest. With that pool, you can restore a total number of hit points equal to your monk level times 10. This is liter so healing hands is literally uh, lay on hands from the from the paladin. Yep. Um. Except except the additional effect of. If you're using Flurry of Blows, you can add it to one of your unarmed strikes. But they did something that is that is fl that is frankly um that is frankly dumb when it comes to it. This feature has no effect on constructs and undead. I'm gonna give this a thumbs down. It's gimmicky. And the gimmick could be cool, but you'd have to reconstruct. I feel like you'd have to reconstruct the gimmick from the ground up to fit it into the level up. This is one of those. Th I think way of trying. I can see what way of tranquility is trying to do. I'd um, I'd I'd compare it to say the white monk from Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Um. The pro the problem the problem is. When it com when it comes to when it comes to it, if somebody want if somebody wanted to have a monk that's healing, they'd be, be they'd be better off just doing cleric dipping. And this is com and this is coming from somebody who does not, because the the other um the other features hi higher up on the list are more are more on the social and more on the social end of things, or uh, or on the more na on the more narrativistic end of things like. Dows the Flames of War is forcing a saving throw on a creature to to calm to calm the thing to calm the thing down. Um, as anger of a anger of a gentle soul, anger of a gentle soul. Um, as you as 
Anger of a Gentle Soul is super gimmicky. If you see one creature reduce another creature to zero HP, you get bonus damage to all rolls against the guy who did the zero HPing of the other guy. Until that, the bonus end of your equal, turn. that bonus equals your level. And your level and the level you get this at is seventeenth. So your bonus damage is seventeen as soon as you get this. Yeah. That's uh, that's an ability that should feature way that's that's something that like if we're doing this my way, or if we're doing this in the way of a lot of other people, like that's something that you get at the latest, like three months into a campaign. Whatever that happens to be is going to be something like level level five maybe or level seven depending on your depending on your scale for the game that you're actually playing but for fifth edition devs it's like all right anything this anything with this many words in it doesn't matter how effective it is doesn't matter what it what it means for the character it's like well we need a level 17 ability and this has the most words so we're gonna put it there funny thing this doesn't even have the most words <laughs> Most words on a unique skill would be Douse the Flames of War at 11th level. Right. Most words at a non-unique skill are Healing Hands at 3rd level. Because... Or you could say the most steps, depending on depending on the ability. Oh most, yeah, the most steps. Not for sure. the rule, but like, I forgot to get... mention Emissary of Peace at 6th level, but really, that's... A, that's really... Um, it's you get advantage on a Charisma check to yeah, make people we've, calm. We've... Be we've been we've been down that route, so I didn't see I didn't see a reason for d for um b digging up that dead horse, um, only to provide a replacement, which was if you tell somebody to be calm, and they don't be calm, uh, you force them to be calm for one minute. Well, not quite. It's it's more like you tell them to be calm, and if they decide to freak out anyway, or if they turn their back on you or something or whatever, uh, you get bonus damage against them. And if for, for the duration that they do remain calm, you get some other bonus, like a bonus to armor class. I I can understand why uh some people might say uh, this would be a decent subclass for a monk. I I get it. I'm giving it a solid, solid thumb down for this particular reason. At least for all the times I've played them, a monk is supposed to be a martial class, and what would be things like calming effects or any sort of healing effects. This the is monk the, is all about is for those personal. Who be, this is for those who want to be who want to be a who want to be the who want to be that aspect of a proto Jedi. Oh, and that's the thing, though. As far as as far as I'm concerned about a monk type character, this is about yeah you know, the character when it comes to these aspects: personal growth, personal calm, maintaining uh, uh, an aspect on the battlefield that allows them to fight, whether it's lethal or you know not quite killing someone. I don't think it, it should extend to. Uh, second or third parties, so I don't like this idea or concept because it, this is something that feels like it should be attributed to a paladin or a cleric, not necessarily a monk. Oh, I mean, so I, for that reason, I don't skill. like it. Lay on um, hands is a pal lay on hands is a paladin skill, and with a lot of the other stuff, um, paladins and clerics will have something to that effect in their own in their spell list. Well, um, I mean. Path of Tranquility is literally, oh, you can just cast Sanctuary on yourself. Which is... That, that's Cleric Spell List. Yeah, that, that's why I don't like this. It doesn't It doesn't fit for me. Like, I don't... This is a... This strikes me as the very Western idea of a monk as a... a different type of religious compatriot and mediator. And I... I'm with Ash on this and saying that this class is very gimmicky. Thus, adapting it would require a, essentially a rebuild from the ground up. So, yeah, for I, I agree. For me, this one's a thumbs down. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. But overall, overall, the the one the one problem that I ha that I have with the with the level up monk 
as a whole is there's a bit of there's a bit of tunnel vision. I think they spent so much time focusing on get focusing on trying to get the martial aspect as right as they want as right as they wanted to. That a lot of the narrative path setups that we've seen that we've seen with other classes in this series aren't present. Now you know how I felt about the about the ranger. Because that that literally was my problem with the ranger. Is is some of these are we're used to these guys developing classes which are supportive of very very broad ranges of uh, narrative concepts, and this particular monk is really good at doing the martial side of things. It's not good at the supernatural side of things. That's not and that's not what I'm getting at. I thought I thought that's literally what you just said. Like where it came to the, they were so focused on the martial aspect. No, what I what I mean is so is focused on, is focused on the martial artist. Act. What I'm ref I'm referring to the I'm referring to the lack of the social um, features that we saw in all, that we saw in a lot of the other classes that has been very dialed back. Best comparison, monk. Adept does not have the same social stratification that even something like Berserker did, where Berserker got like the little helpers at the village and shit. Yeah, I yeah. there's not there's not a whole they're based. For all intents and purposes, they were these kind these kind of features that we saw were um were skill knacks. It was a case of you um e either tr either so you get you got it you did get it. A lot of them were doing the whole getting advantage in a cer in a certain specific skill use, but there was also a narr there was also a narrative element to it. Like the whole the whole thing we saw with some of the ones in the Warlord last week. There's I really hope I really hope that gets added in the in the final version because that's been that's been one of the great strengths and that's what I'm referring to the whole martial versus psychic thing for the purposes of this I don't care about that it's something that something that Ian World has been doing very well with the, with these class with these classes is pre, is present is presenting a is presenting a narrative arc throughout the leveling process. We saw we saw this especially given the, given the twenty levels worth that we had in um, last week. That I still think I still think the Berserker is probably the best example to compare to the Adept, though, because um, the Berserker is another class that's heavily martial focused traditionally. The Barbarian's always been a, a martial crit fisher, as we even pointed out in that episode. Yeah. Um, Whereas the Berserker in Ian World's level up 5e is, it, it, it still has, you know, those pieces, those mechanical bits for being that martial character are there. But then it also gives a narrative focus for the same martial prowess. The martial prowess is not just, ex uh, not just expressed within combat. It's expressed as, oh, you're a, you have a fearsome reputation. People are scared of you and give you shit because they're scared of you. Every time you come to this village, any new village, someone gives you a small gift. And then, you know, Ash, you made the, the joke of them gifting you wives. Oh, that, that's actually something good to uh, point out as well. And I know this is going to sound a little bit gimmicky, so don't, don't roast me too hard. But no just going... <laughs> Just going with the aspect of a uh, a monk character, knowing that usually monks are a solitary, but still, you know, work to try to defend uh, others around them, things of that nature. Maybe we could do something a little bit more with uh, the charisma, which was pretty much useless from what I heard, where you won a battle against goblins, or you defeated a uh, you defeated an orc, or you. Know, you killed the witch with your psychic daggers. Congratulations, Psylocke. That gives you that gives you some sort of benefits with other uh, other NPCs that you're going to interact with. Maybe that would make that aspect of the character a little more useful as a as a social dynamic. It, and, and what Monk was pointing out is that 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 this class seems to have been tunnel visioned in a way 
that those things which were already organically added to other classes we've reviewed are missing. It is a it is almost a glaring uh, lack when you when you when you look for what is empty. It, you, oh yeah, because you because you, you would think is like the peaceful, tranquil person who's just wearing humble robes, all of a sudden defeated you know twenty golems that are trying to kill the village. It I think you should get at least some sort of positive modifier for doing that. Well, the other the other big the other big reason that that I'm that I'm focusing on this is has to do has to do with the sidebar that they had on archetypes, where they mentioned if where they mentioned that because it definitely sounds that they're going to be adding their own subclasses built built around it, which is which is something I think we all saw as inevitable. But what I wanted to what I wanted to specifically focus on with this is that they. By rename by renaming it adept, and with the sidebar on with the sidebar on archetypes, they are putting in the implication that the that that um that this can be that this is this can be used just as much for for um people who still want to do the bra the brawler archetype, but don't necessarily want to have the whole cloistered in a temple background that's stereotypically associated with the monk class. Once you yes. and because essentially with that you are putting Chekhov's gun on the table, and you need to f and if the and as we as we've made clear over the years, if the gun's going to be on the table, it's got to go off. And so far and so far, I have not seen that thing fired. I think I think it might need to be serviced or check if it's a high point. If it's a high point, just throw it out and replace it. If it's a high point, just throw it. It'll be more effective than shooting with it. <laughs> We don't acknowledge that high points are even functional firearms at this point in time. Yes, we do. On Demo Ranch, he threw it at a target, and the target fell down. Oh, to be fair, they do make successful uh, bludgeoning objects also, when they're not made of plastic. Also, let's not forget that Cursed Halo had the reverse throwing pistol. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Why did you have to remind me of that? <laughs> because God has cursed me for my hubris, and my work is never finished. <laughs> but, As um, someone who is a firearms enthusiast and grew up in a military family, I absolutely hate you for that, Mildra. And yes, I I will not be saving you a seat at the bar in hell for that one. It's okay. not like you have to save him a seat. He's got a guest of honor position. Fuck off. Especially since Satan still owes me money. Just take it from his daughter. Lucy's always good for it. It's the principle. <laughs> Uh, well, you should really be uh, making him pay interest then, if it's only the principal. It depends on what he's paying you in. Are we talking uh, golden violins, or are we talking bone dust? Or are we talking souls? Why? W why would I? Bu why would I buy a? Go why would I want a golden violin? Why would I want a violin that's going to be heavy, unwieldy, and impossible to play? And I don't even play the friggin' violin. It's an effective bludgeon. And it also makes for a good uh, desk, a desk piece. So. It makes an effective bludgeon once. Then it's bent and warped and useless. Oh no, it's just sharp. It becomes more effective the more bent it gets. I'd like to point out, though, that um, Monk is not from Georgia, so I think he wouldn't be getting a golden fiddle. Oh no, see, that's the fiddle. That's the fiddle. We're talking about the... Vi now, if we want to talk about fiddle, there's a lot of different other uses for that one, but that's uh, that's not family-friendly. <laughs> When the well, hell who said I... this place is family friendly? What the fuck, Doku? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if you're gonna That's if you're gonna give me so, if you're gonna give me a golden instrument that I'm gonna use as a bludgeoning object anyway, just just give me a cello. I mean, monk, I'd just give you you know a four by four, uh, a ten foot four by four made of gold. Yeah, you may. Yeah, just cut out the just cut out the middleman. Um. I mean, you could technically melt down the gold and turn it into barbed wire, and then you just make Blue Seal 2.0. It'll be good. Do you but know I ain't how calling you Negan. Stupid golden barbed wire would be. Those barbs would be useless. Oh, it would be hilarious. I'm not saying they would be effective, but it would I think be funny. We, I think we've lost Ash amongst all this uh, <laughs> this banter. Yeah. That be that being said. 
Next week, we will be tackling a caster, and we'll be tackling the caster that was the hardest one for us to deal with when we did the Reconstructing Classes ep episode of Geek Watch. Um, and I, I can say this, I probably will be making rinse wind jokes, and we will have a perfect opportunity to bitch about how much we hate the concentration rule. God damn it, Monk. But... That is a story for another week. And until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>